Hey everyone, this is Jason with Sentiment Trader. I just want to take a minute to look at the backtesting engine that Eric has created. It's a fantastic tool that lets anybody get some more detail behind any of the indicators on the site and how markets have performed after the indicators are at a certain level or have behaved in a certain way. So just pull up any indicator. In this case, it's the Smart Money to Money Confidence Spread. Once you pull up the chart, just scroll down and click Backtest This Indicator. That'll pull up the backtesting engine. Once the chart loads, um, you can start changing any of the parameters. It'll automatically load with the default. Um, so in this case, it pulls up the Smart Money to Money Confidence Spread along with the S&P 500. Now, if you want to change that and test how extremes in the indicator performed against the Dow, the NASDAQ Composite, the Russell 2000, even a, maybe a foreign market like the Shy Comp or TSX for Canadian stocks, you can do that. You can do it against one of the ETFs like maybe IWM, um, maybe consumer staples. If that's your this a sector you're looking at, you can choose any of those um, to test against. But we'll just leave it as the default against the S&P 500. Um, don't need to change the indicator because that's what we want to test. The indicator smoothing, that's, um, so say if you want to say, instead of looking at the raw daily values in the spread, say you want to see how it performs when the spread, the 10 day period moving average of the spread reaches a certain level. You can select that. And that'll force the back testing engine to test uh, the moving average and not the, the actual indicator. But we don't want to do that right now. We're just going to look at the, the raw daily value. Uh, the index filter is new. Um, Eric has added that in the past week. So what this allows you to do is test the indicator um, when the market is above or below a certain moving average. So say we're going to look at long-term uptrends. So we'll choose the 200 period moving average. It'll plot that on the chart. And what that does is it'll force the back testing engine to only take signals when the S&P 500 is trading above its 200 day moving average. Um, if you scroll down, you can change some of the other parameters. Look back period is how far back you want to look. Um, for this test, let's just go back to all history. For regular tier subscribers, that might just let you go back five years. Premium tier, you can use all history. Um, we want to get as many precedents as possible, so let's just use all history. Observation period is how far in the future you want to look. This is a more intermediate term indicator. One to three months is its most effective time frame. So let's just go ahead and select 30 days. Indicator condition is what you're actually testing for. Now, let's say we want to test for times when the spread is extremely positive. Smart money is bullish, dumb money is bearish. Typically, that should result in, in good performance going forward, but let's go ahead and test that. So indicator condition is above and then the value, say 0.4. And you can see that 0.4 is, is pretty extreme up here. So um, this will choose any day that the indicator is above 0.4. It's not unique instances. So any of these days where the indicator is above that level, it's going to record in the test. If you want to restrict it to only unique occurrences, you can select exclude overlapping observations. And that will force the back testing engine to only give you a signal um, that we're at least 30 days apart. Or if you selected, say, 60 days, it would only allow signals that were 60 days apart. But we just want to see the market anytime the indicator is above 0.4. Swap index filter means that instead of testing for conditions when the S&P is above its 200-day moving average, if you select the, this box, it'll test for conditions when the S&P is below its 200-day moving average. So it'll let you test conditions when a market is in a bear market, for example, which can be extremely useful because markets behave differently whether in a, a bull or bear board, bull or bear mode. So uh, we're not going to have that now. So the test is going to, to test for conditions when the S&P is above its 200 day moving average. Just click um, run the back test and it'll give you the figures. So this just gives a summary of what the back test is about, the parameters that you selected. And this will give the actual results along with the dates and the return in the index going forward. So the most important thing typically is average return, your win rate, um, and then it'll give you the average win, the average loss, um, the per percentage of time in the market, the number of days where this event triggered, um, and some more information. So in this case, we can see that 30 days later, so 30 days after the spread was above 0 0.4 and the S&P was above its 200 day moving average, the S&P was higher 30 days later, 88% of the time by an average of 3.2% about, which is very, very good. If you click the multi time frame results, that'll give you 
some more details. So you can see one week later, two weeks later, up to one year later, how the index performed. And you can see one month later, uh, that, that was its most consistent uh, most consistent outperformance by being up 88% of the time with a, over a 3% return. We can go back above and change any of these parameters. Um, so let's just say, how about in a bear market? Was this effective during a bear market? Just click that box and that'll give you times when the S&P was below its 200 day moving average. A uh, little bit less effective here. The S&P was still up 77% of the time. Um, across the board, it was just the market wasn't as high, uh, wasn't positive as, as frequently, which makes sense because it's a bear market. Um, so you can go back here and say, well, what about times of extreme optimism when the spread was below minus 0 0.4 and the market was in a bear market? Run the back test. Well, here you can see 30 days later, the S&P was higher only 38% of the time. Um, two months later, it was 41% of the time with a almost minus 2% return. So it can be a, a pretty effective indicator depending on the market environment at the time. You can do this test for really any of the, indicator we have on the indicators we have on the site. There are very few exceptions. Most of the markets we covered, whether they're in a bull or bear market, um, you can test whether the indicator went above or below a certain level, whether it crossed above or below that level. Um, so there, are, it's it's pretty flexible in what you can test. Um, doesn't have to be overwhelming. You can use it with very basic defaults and give you a sense for how markets reacted when an indicator was at a, a certain level, which can be a fantastic tool. And you don't have to rely on any of the reports or anything that we might say. You can go ahead and test it yourself. So. I hope it's effective. Um, Eric has done a great job with it, and, and there are some improvements that we'll be making going forward, but uh, we think it's a really great tool the way it is and are comfortable in the results that it gives. So if you have any feedback, we always appreciate hearing it. You can contact me directly at jason at sentimenttrader.com or eric at eric at sentimenttrader.com, and we always like hearing it. So um, we hope it's effective, and we hope it works for you.